There are a lot of different ways that we as scientists try to assess how many species occur in a given space, how many individuals there are within a species, um, and ultimately assess the need for management or conservation efforts for a given species in a particular area. And we're constantly coming up with new methods that are classically more and more non-invasive. So how can we still answer these questions to figure out how many there are in a given place um, without affecting those populations through our work? And one of those methods that's been developing over the past few years in the marine environment is environmental DNA. The whole idea behind it is that as animals are swimming through the water column, they're shedding little pieces of DNA as they move. And so you could potentially take a water sample and have an idea of whether or not a species occurs in a given area, which is really valuable for something like an endangered species. As all of these little pieces of DNA are falling off of the organism, um, being shed by an organism through normal metabolic processes or otherwise, we can collect those through a water sample and then in the lab run different analyses to figure out which species are present in that area. We need to figure out basically how this methodology compares to those that have been tested and, and proved to be successful. And so what we've done in this study is run baited remote underwater video surveys. Basically we put out a bait box, we film it for about four to five hours. That gives us confirmed records of species in a given area. So we use the submersible to deploy these units on one dive. We go back the next day to that same spot. We collect our video cameras, we collect our bait boxes if they're still there, and we take a water sample in that exact spot. Some of the species that we've seen on these video surveys are new to us in this location. We've never actually had confirmed sightings of them. For instance, the night shark. We got some incredible footage of a night shark actually approaching a bait box, eating a Cuban dogfish, a type of deep water shark, um, circling back around, eating a deep water isopod, and then circling back around and eating the bait box. There are all these positives and negatives to different methodologies. Baited remote underwater video surveys have those as well because they select for species that are drawn to dead fish, um, the bait that we're using. eDNA, on the other hand, this environmental DNA, doesn't select for that. It, it potentially encompasses a much broader range of species um, and could give us a more holistic view of what's actually occurring in the area. On the ship, we actually, on the spot, take these Niskin bottles, these water samplers, off the sub and run them through a small filter. In this project, uh, we're setting some deep water cameras to validate uh, what sharks we're seeing and then collecting water samples at those depths, which include 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 and 400 meters. Um, and then we'll take these water samples back to the lab uh, run them through a very fine mesh filter to catch the DNA, uh, and then we can sequence the DNA and see who's been swimming by. I'm interested in um, shark abundance and, and distribution and what drives those patterns. So, um, and this is a relatively unexplored area, um, so it'll be really cool to see the, the species that we can find, and if this is a valid method to analyze those species, which are This is the first time that we've done this in the deep ocean, um, but it has tremendous upside. We're really hopeful that the results we get are positive, that we actually do find DNA from the species that we know we're at that location. Um, and if not, then you know we at least provide some boundaries that, that can say whether or not this technique is appropriate for answering these questions, and we know to look elsewhere. <laughs>